This is the pre-show, just for those of you coming in. This is not the actual webinar. This is just the before the webinar to make sure your speakers are working and everything that goes with it. Uh, you know, Warren, you, you had this really great idea where you changed all of our our items uh, to, to where we were. We probably should have done it based on our time zone or, or the generalized time where we are. Yes. I think that would have been, uh, it's, been it's fun coming well. up to 2 a.m., Jeff, here in Australia. <laughs> and I've got one of my favorite tipples here, one of the best selling <laughs> beers in Australia. It's going to keep me going, I hope. If I fall asleep, you guys have just got to throw something at me. <laughs> How many have you had, Warren? No, only when I was frightened I would fall asleep and miss the <laughs> show. Well, you know, we would have called. Uh, just oh, so you I'm know, sure. we've got a little bit of chat happening here. We've got yeah. some Q&A. Well, although, you know, um, for those of you, again, coming in, if this is your first Zoom webinar, I'll let you know that there's at the bottom a chat pod, a... Uh, um, a participants pod that we see so we can see what you guys are doing. Q and A, if you wanted to ask questions, we're just gonna let people file in for a couple minutes. So Warren, I, I take it your, yours is the earliest in the morning, two in the morning. Where is anybody else, uh, Yuki, or is it that uh, early for you? Midnight, spot on, midnight. So, so I'm 12 hours off, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. noon here for me. Yeah, coronavirus is over here. It's all done. You're gonna have to wait another day. Uh, who else is? Uh, is it nighttime for? No one else. Just no five o'clock here. I'm right in. Warren, Warren is in the future. Oh, okay. How's the Warren, future? Warren's Amsterdam always in the future. Amsterdam at dinner time. <laughs> in Amsterdam, you know, at dinner time. It's six o'clock. We, we should have also have done uh, uh, who's had at least one drink. <laughs> what are we talking I have about? one drink here. <laughs> we got a uh, cheers from Florida. Uh, we got a Buenos Dias from Colombia. That's mm -hmm. fantastic. We got at I least one Spanish, drink. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry? I love your Spanish. Uh, my Spanish. My Spanish is pretty bad. Uh, my, my French is a little bit better. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, was it Buenos Noches? Uh, oh, um, Mi Amo uh, Jeff and uh, Donde Es La Biblioteca. That's it. <laughs> oh, dos cervezas. How, do, how am I doing there, Diego? Pretty bad? That's perfect, perfect. But, but the, what, the, the perfect Spanish is from Warren. <laughs> can, can you say something in Spanish, Warren? I can uh, click the retro. <laughs> <laughs> Never gets old. Oh, the old ones are the best. I uh, bought a stream deck. Uh, it finally showed up yesterday, and what's really amazing for is I spent like two hours customizing it. Two hours customizing it last night, including a button to mute myself. Wow! Remove the picture. Mm and do screen sharing just to make my life easier with Zoom. I'm really impressed by it. I'll tell you, um, the person who really turned me on to it originally was Robbie Carmen, And uh, Robbie's my brother from another mother. And uh, just absolutely, uh, it's a great little piece of hardware. And I've got, I've got other buttons uh, like that. I've got a Orb Weaver, I've got a, uh, an X Keys, but boy, is this such a nice little piece of hardware. Have you tried using it with Resolve? I have. I've got, of course, you know, adding nodes, adding outside nodes, yeah. bypasses, bring up my highlights. And I, I can sense that I'm going to need, like, for some, some of the editing pages, I'm going to need, like, four or five sets of them really to feel good. But uh, so maybe next month I'll give you some of my opinions about what I've done with it, if you guys haven't picked up one. Let's uh, yeah. talk about what, what your favorite television show has been. Oh, wow. Um, for me, it's it's none of these, so I'm going to go with Tiger King. <laughs> uh, I wanted Warren. There was no. Uh, I wanted Mandalorian or Picard in there, but that's me. Yeah, well, uh, you know, it's. Uh, it, I thought it was going to be Trump's Daily Update for you. <laughs> I mean, that, isn't that show? Oh my God! Did you like? Mate, the, I, obviously, I'm, the webinar's I'm, not long enough. 
Let's move on. I'm not going to do politics. <laughs> but let's just say, not happy. No, not happy. I'm Jeff Greenberg. I'm uh, on the East Coast of U.S. Technically, at times, uh, I'm, I'm in New York. I was a uh, professor at Columbia last year. We've got uh, Diego joining us, Guy joining us, Blake, Yuki, Kevin, Warren. Uh, gentlemen, I'm going to take us off the screen share here. And uh, I'd just like to, in alphabetical order, just introduce yourself, where you are, uh, maybe something you're doing today or you've done today or something new you've come across recently. I've already talked about the stream, de stream deck, and I'm going to let you guys go ahead and take it away. I think that puts Blake, you up first. Okay. Yeah. So um, we're slowly getting over the uh, COVID-19 over here. And um, so it's, things are slowly getting back to normal, slowly but surely. And so I'm... Uh, also doing a lot of now interactive training and also getting ready to grade a project for a slackline walk over an active volcano film that was done recently just before the whole outbreak happened and so they're currently editing and now they have to come to me for color grading that's that's fantastic what format was it is it shot in uh it was uh, shot in alexa raw mm -hmm. Nice, nice. Yeah. I'd love to see see you like if you're allowed to share any of those. Shows, oh yeah, I'm definitely. Yeah, awesome. yeah. Well, definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, how is it uh, in Munich right now? Oh, it's nice. Beautiful weather here. Really nice. Yeah, we had really stormy weather yesterday. Now it seems to be cleared up, and now it's all nice and fresh. And next week the beer gardens open again, so people are happy that's, about that. Yeah. That's <laughs> that's <laughs> that's both news. wonderful and terrible you know yeah. at <laughs> some level uh i believe that's going to take us over to diego diego why don't you talk to us for a bit how are you so i'm in bogota i'm in colombia here is 11 a.m this is a early beer a beer it's, it's really a morning beer but because warren is drinking so i have to drink also <laughs> so about the situation here they're starting to open in some some like some institutions, some government like places. I'm not sure if it's the right decision. I, I really like to stay and I really want to stay in my home safe. And I also invite you guys to stay in your home safe. If you, if you need to go out, just go out, make what you need to and then go back home. Because I mean, the situation is, is difficult. It is, a, it is a little scary and uh, you know, we're barely out. I had to uh, uh, take a car to get it serviced this week. And that was a whole process. Myself, my wife, a lot of gloves, a lot of face masks, just uh, a little scary in that regard. But uh, the car needed to work. Yes. Uh, I think that's gonna bring me over to Guy. Or Guy, Hi. pardon me, Guy. I, I, yeah. That's the second time I've done that, my friend, go ahead. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm in Amsterdam. It's uh, it's six o'clock uh, over here, um, and uh, well, uh, what can I say? Everybody is sitting inside. Uh, they're opening up a little bit uh, in Holland now, but uh, uh, I think people can go to their hairdresser now for the first time in three months. That was quite necessary. With me, it's also necessary, as you can see. But oh, well, we can wait a little bit. And work-wise, well, uh, actually grading, it's almost nothing. And what I'm doing is uh, remote-based. Uh, we'll talk about that later. I, you know, when we were practicing and talking about this over the last month, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you the truth. I knew Resolve could do this. I've not seen it in practice. I was blown away. So I'm really excited to see... Uh, this in, in practice uh, as, you, as you guys show this because you're really way far apart. Um, that should take us to Mr. Shaw, Kevin. Hey there. Yep, <clears throat> well, I'm in London. We're still definitely in lockdown. Um, I've uh, taken care of the hairdressing problem and uh, we've got lots of uh, food stocked up so we don't we even go to the supermarket uh, very rarely. Um, there's huge queues still, you know, around the car park and stuff. Can you, and can you get toilet paper? Can you get, uh, what's the other one? Uh, toilet paper has been difficult. Anything cleaning based. Uh, we're, we're seeing shortages on uh, dairy and meat. Well, you know, we, um, we came back from Taiwan in February and we, so we knew what was coming and we just stocked up on everything. So we could, we can go six months, no problems. 
<laughs> but I've been really embracing this whole virtual world and uh, really getting to know uh, virtual classrooms, virtual machines. I, this has changed my way of life. I may never get to travel quite as much as I did before. Which it's going to it's going to hurt hurt but boy did you uh take the lead on a really interesting solution when we talk about virtualized classrooms at the end here i think it's just a really impressive solution both to somebody who needs a little bit more horsepower on occasion and for teaching and training i i think uh the solution we're going to talk about a little bit later today is just super impressive and the big surprise is it's so accessible i had no idea that it's just available now it's going to be great uh, i'm very excited i'm going to go out of order here yuki uh, i'm going to come to you only because warren we've got how can somebody follow you warren so i've got to go to yuki first yuki sir talk to us how you doing what's going on right now in your corner well, of the world the good thing is i'm still alive uh that's one thing so still grateful on that uh the situation here in singapore actually by today, it's been eased up a bit. So some barber shop, cake shop uh, is starting to open up. McDonald was closed for about two months here. So, no, a month. And they just opened up uh, today, if I'm not wrong. So, But they don't open up uh, for 24 hours. It's like from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. currently. So yeah, it's getting better. Are, are you jonesing that much for a Big Mac or uh, no, McNuggets? I'm, I'm not a, really a McDonald's fan, but can you imagine like the first day of they open, there's a long queue I, on that? I'm sure. I, I have to ask, having been to Singapore and just absolutely a phenomenal uh, location, are the hawker markets open at all? Uh, yes, they are open. They've been open for uh, since the beginning of the lockdown. Not the lockdown, they call it circuit breaker, but we can't dine in. It's just available for takeaways. Wow. Yeah, because the food there in Singapore is just breathtakingly good and inexpensive. Yeah. I've, I don't think I've ever uh, eaten at a less expensive Michelin-starred restaurant as I did in... Uh, is that the yeah. chicken rice one? It was the chicken rice one. It was fantastic. Yeah, yeah you got. I, I had a best time there. And... Uh, I think we're going to transition now to Mr. Eagles, sir. Talk to us. How's two two in the morning? <laughs> Hello. I'm struck. I'm struck. Hello, everybody. How are you? How are you, Jeff? I do have a little little beverage just to keep me going, uh, and I've also had a shave. And one of my staff cut my hair, so I'm already. Uh, which one of your staff? Which which one of the which, which child would you let at your hair? Uh, the slippers? eldest one. The middle one had a go. He was useless, hopeless. The okay. eldest one, he cares a little bit about his appearance, and he did a pretty good job. So haircuts are cheaper. Uh, but Australia, we're going very well. Uh, lucky to live down here. They've got it pretty well under control. Lock things down early. Obviously, the industry is very quiet. All I'm colouring of jobs that were shut, shot before COVID-19. So I've got a feature doc to start next week, which will be good. And a couple of other little pitch products. So I reached out to a lot of the cinematographers and offered to grade showreels and pitch pieces for free just to help people out. So I've had a bit of feedback there, and that gets me doing things as well. So it's not too bad. We're lucky here. That, that is, uh, uh, yeah, I think that, that if there's any, any group not doing it right, it's a lot of what's going on in the U.S. And uh, I hear, hear good things about uh, at least some of the lockdown procedures you're doing in Australia, at least to some degree. I don't think the beaches are ready yet. Uh, okay. No. I, think, I think let's, let's uh, here we go. Uh, let's. Let's just take a look at a slide here. So right now, we just met everybody. We're talking about uh, beating the COVID color curve. Uh, you can see that it's a, a very interesting time right now. Uh, at the very end, we're gonna give away a Flanders $500 discount voucher. Uh, when we go to do that, the one thing we're gonna ask is only a try and answer, only try and uh, win this if you're going to actually find it valuable. And that's gonna bring us to Diego and Guy. Uh, Diego's in Bogota. 
Gee is in Amsterdam, and they're going to talk about some remote grading. So thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, everyone. Saludo a todos los que están en otras partes del mundo. So let's start. Let me share my screen. This is something that all of us are wondering. How to remote grade? There are so many options. There are a lot of traditional ways to remote grading. There are or shading ways. But in this part with GI, we are going to show some really great, good methods to grade it. And at the end, we are going to make some demo. So first, we already present each other, but I just want to remind you that I'm in Bogota. This is my grading room. And I want to introduce to GI. Can you guys tell us about where you are? This is your grading room. Can you share us? Yes, this is my grading room in Amsterdam. Uh, it's, it's a, I've got a projection and some seats. Um, and what we're going to do now is that uh, uh, we will pretend that Diego is my client and I'm the grader in Amsterdam. So we're going to show you that later. Yeah, perfect. And we're so far away. We're so far away. I just mean one time in Amsterdam, it was a year ago and it's really far away. It's like how many hours by plane? Like 20 or I don't know, 15 yeah, hours. Something and there is like no direct flight. Fly. There is no direct flight. I have to stop in, in probably in Germany and then take a flight. So we, we are yes, really, really. Or, or you have to stop in Panama, I think. Yeah, I mean, this is so far. It's so far, but it's, I, I love Amsterdam. It's a really beautiful city. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to talk a little bit about how to stream color using some different systems. We are going to then talk about how to work remotely sharing DRP, and at the end, we are going to make a demo about remote grading in resource. Okay, that will be the nicest part. Okay, so let's start with the first one, streaming color. So this, this is a really nice solution. It actually works, you need to encode your image using hardware, and then in the client part, you need to decode your image. It's a really nice option because the client is going to have a good quality video, is going to collaborate in real time and it's going to actually listen to you is going to make a call with you and you're going to make your adjustment he's going to make it in real time it's really good yes the quality is it can be 4k it can be even hdr the client doesn't need to have resolve installed just the colorist but the main problem is start when it's expensive i mean it's not a solution that is is something like you can make it, it's, it's an expensive solution. That's a little bit one problem. Also the problem is that the setup, it doesn't, I mean, it requires an engineer or an IT support to set up, to adjust all of the things. They also, the other backward drawback that we have is that the DOP reviews the footage in the monitor, in his monitor. And that's the main problem because it's a, it's a GUI monitor. It's not a Revenant 709 monitor. And also one drawback that we say is that the DOP doesn't have any scope to check if the blacks are black or if the whites are in the point. So it is a nice method to shade footage and to, I like to rate remotely. But I mean, if, if you ask to me, what is the main drawback? It's expensive and the problem that the client is checking this in his monitor, which is not ideal, all right? So let's, let's, let's comment the next one. The next one probably is the easiest one. It's the easiest one and it's the cheapest one. So this is sharing DRP. So how it works. I confirm my project, I have all my footage, I made my grade and I sent to the client the DRP. He opens the footage, and he start like making some comments in the footage. Then he sent me again the DRP. I open the DRP and I see all of his comments. He made that comments in markers. So it will be really easy to me like to check where it's wrong or what is he saying. He can share me a project or he can export the markers at EDL, as EDL and I can import it. By that way, I don't need to open a new project and so on. I just import the markers, All right? So this one is, is this really cheap and really easy. But Guy, can you share us? What do you think that are the advantage of the drawbacks about this metal? 
Well, um, uh, the, the, the main uh, problem is that it's, it's not interactive. Uh, what we did in, uh, what, what we're gonna show you a little bit later is an interactive way. And this way is absolutely not interactive. So you, you share uh, the, the, your, your file um, with somebody else on another place, uh, but it's, it's always a bit, uh, yeah. Uh, the, I think the main disadvantage is that the client is not allowed to make a mistake because in the comment he said, well guys, it needs to be a little bit more red. And then you do that and then he thinks, hmm, it's not so good. Actually, it was better the way before. And then you, he, he can't do that anymore because he already commented that it has to be more red. So I think it's, it's not an ideal way. Yes, yes, we are, we are agree about it. For example, right now I'm grading a movie using this method. And I like it in some way because I mean, he, he saw my timeline, he made markers. I'm looking at that markers, but it's not the ideal method that you are right about it. All right, so now let's move to the remote grading resource, all right? And we're going to make a demo of how this works in real time. Probably this is going to be the first demo in real time that I'm, I'm watching in, in internet. So, can you, can you share us about how, how this works, Guy? Yes, um, actually for the client, it's very simple. Uh, you almost have, the only thing you have to do is put in uh, my IP address, what I sent to you. Um, actually, the problem is with the colorist. Maybe you can go to the next slide, uh, Diego. Perfect. So this is something that we, we must have. All right, we must have the same version of Resolve. All right, we must have the same footage. But for example, if I'm the client, hey, I'm the owner of the footage. So that's not a problem. And we need to have, or we need to export a DRP also. And the same footage, the same project, and that's the must have for make this remote grading with Resolve. So right now, Gim, we are, sharing or we did this like experiment with some transfer programs in this case we use we transfer but you can share footage with many of these like companies most of them have really good services so it's, this is not a problem okay the only problem can be probably the the internet connection and the the speed connection but that's it all right so now can you show me or can you share us what are the main setup that the colorists need to make? Yes, at the colorist, um, you have to, to find, of course, your IP address. Uh, well, a very simple way is uh, go to a website. Uh, there's uh, whatsmyip.com is the most easy one. Um, and you have to write that down. And then you need your local IP address. So that's a number your router gives to your computer. You need to know that. And then you have to open your firewall um, because otherwise we, we can't have a peer-to-peer -peer connection. Um, and of course, uh, um, uh, you, you can test it quite easy by using your smartphone. That's what I did um, on my smartphone uh, with another computer, uh, with another laptop actually. Uh, I made a... a uh, a connection. So uh, on my grading system, I could test and on my little laptop um, with uh, the, IF, the phone connected to it, um, I could test if it worked. And actually it, that is a very easy system to know if everything is fine. And yeah, then of course, sure. uh, when you're finished, you have to send out the IP address to your client and he can type it in. Yeah, for example, in my case that I'm not so technical, it's really simple for an engineer and so on, or even for the people of, of the companies of the phones and so on to make that setup. It's, it's not something so complicated. All right, so for example- I'm just what... gonna weigh in for one second, just so everybody knows. Um, as this goes on, please feel free to use the Q&A pod to ask questions and we'll make a decision whether or not we're gonna maybe even bring somebody live. But at the very least, we'll be able to keep the uh, questions there for the chat. I'll turn it back to you, Diego. 
All right, perfect. So right now let's go with what the client needs. What do you think that he needs to set up or what are the requirements? Well, of course, the most important thing is that, um, and also that's immediately the big advantage, the client has a rough monitor. Um, because it's, it's connected to Resolve and Resolve uh, works with a, with a good monitor. Um, and uh, well, not everybody has a, a, a rough monitor and it, it needs to be calibrated also. On the other hand, come on, you're, you're working with an expensive colorist. So it's penny wise pound foolish not to calibrate your monitor. If you can't, for what, Corona reason, um, you can use a color bar uh, and combine it with a, a, a blue only glass. You have these small ones. I had one laying around and now I lost it. Uh, you know these, these little ones? Let, let me see, yep, I've got them. Okay, you know these from the old 3D? Uh, okay, if you put your hand on the red one and look through the green, you can see at the color bar uh, the, the pattern you need to see. Okay, it's crappy. It won't be really right. Uh, I think uh, Greg, our, our color, our calibrator at the ICA will hate me for this, but come on guys, it's a way to make sure that your monitor is more or less right. And then you can use a plush um, to, to have your uh, contrast um, settings more or less right. Um, the plush is a very simple, you can just Google it, download it into your system, put it on the monitor and tweak your brightness and contrast so far that you just can see, just can see the little black uh, gray uh, bars on there. It's, it's okay, it's not perfect, but it works. Um, so let's assume that there is a good monitor and it's calibrated. Um, then at the client, you don't need anything anymore. Uh, the only thing you have to do is use uh, command G. Uh, but I think Jago is gonna talk about that. Yeah, perfect. So we're talking more about optimizing a monitor. And what this is that is something really important is that for example, if, if you have some of these like small boxes and you have like a really nice monitor or even the colorist can send you a monitor he's going to have a really good quality image a calibrated image and this one is these ones are really cheap that's one advantage okay so what i'm going to do right now is that i'm going to follow these steps i'm going to open a drp i'm going to relink the media okay i already link it then i'm going to customize my interface of resolve so that I can see the parade. Then I go to press command G and then the IP and I will enter, okay? But I want to show you something really nice. For example, let me go back here, wait. So all the colorists need to do is to send these instructions by email, yes? In this case, he sent me the instructions and he sent me the footage, no more, all right? No more, so now I will do it. I mean resolve. Everyone see my resolve interface? Yes? Okay, perfect. So what I'm going to do is he says to me, okay, open resolve, relink, go to the page, press command G and select this IP. I will press, wait me, command C. And now I will go to resolve and I will press command G and I will press command B, all right? And in this part, all I need to do as a client is press connect. It says okay, validate moment, pass. Yes. On, on my side, uh, the moment he press connect, I can accept it or reject it. Uh, you can see it in, in, in the small uh, part I, I switched to, uh, to my resolve. So I say accept, and now we are connected. That will say that I now can grade on Diego's system. Um, so if I click to the, to another one, you will see I'm clicking in Amsterdam and in Bogota, it's now changing. So if I put on, for instance, a lot on this one, 
Uh, let's do that. It's black magic material. Um, okay. And now you see it changing in Bogota. Uh, I even can put on, for instance, a little mask around her and give her a bit more color. So you can see it's absolutely possible to remote grade and Diego can see everything I'm doing. Uh, if I'm using, now you can see me in my studio. Uh, I can go down, for instance, on the, let's go to the main image. I can bring the blacks down. I can bring a little bit of the highlight down. And Diego can follow it on the scopes in uh, Bogota. But now yes, the most important thing. Yes, and one good thing see, that we have here is that, I mean, if I'm using this, like this small box, I can have like this in full screen. So here, for example, I will put my camera here and I can sit as normal and I can relax. I can see in, in one screen the scopes and in another screen, the big screen, I can relax, take a beer and make the comments. And of course, we need uh, a Skype like call or a Zoom call, but it will be in real, real time. For example, try to move right now the, to another like clip, GIMP, and make some adjustment. Okay, let's go to the, to the big one and do some adjustment on it. Bring it a bit down, bring it a bit up. Uh, So as you, as you see, for example, here, um, I can switch between my interface. So I will put my desktop here. All right, now everyone see my, my resolve. Okay, and I can, I can relax, that's really cool. So for example, I want to ask you something, Guy. Are you working with raw files or ProRes files? What kind of files are you working in? Yeah, mm -hmm. actually, we have to have the same. Uh, in order to, to make it work, uh, I made uh, proxies of, uh, of the footage, uh, very small files, send them over to Diego. That makes it very easy for Diego to, to open it uh, and even to run it on, on a not so good laptop. Um, then everything will run perfectly. And now comes the big trick. After you are connected, uh, and you have sent it to Diego, I can change back to my raw files. So actually in Amsterdam, if you zoom in, if you can see it on the little icon, uh, on, on the little thumbnail, I'm in Blackmagic raw uh, in the files and Diego is in progress. So the only thing you can't do is I can't work in the role. The moment I do that, Diego can't see it, of course, because he is in proxies. He's looking at ProRes material and I'm looking at raw material. So if you use it the way it's meant to be, that it's dig digital negative, then you did all the raw settings before you made the proxies and send it out to Diego. So um, for now, uh, I can work in RAW and Diego looks at it in proxies because that's easy to send and it will run on his computer. And in my big studio, everything can run in RAW. Yes, so that's, that's, really, that's really cool because I mean, you, know, you guys know that most of the clients doesn't have a really like fast speed connection or a storage. So for example, it will be completely different to send RAW files or ProRes files. So I don't need a fast internet connection to download it. And this is a really good question that when I start making this, I, I was like thinking, do I need as a client a fast internet connection, Guy? No, you don't. You don't because the, you, the, the only thing what is sent over the internet connections are my commands. So those are just very small uh, files, very small packages uh, sent over. The moment I, I turn on, on a wheel, um, then you will see that the scopes are going down. Uh, 
but it's only the, the command, uh, what is sent from Amsterdam to Bogota, to bring it down. So that's, it's not files, it's not footage, because that's already in Bogota. So, so that's actually just, really cool. I'm just going to interrupt for a moment because we're getting one of the questions we're getting is, what is your internet speed? And I think it's important for us to, for both of you guys to say what your speed is, but realistically, um, because it's just the commands, this would work, say, over a cellular connection. Would you agree with that, Guy? Absolutely. It works over cellular. Um, it, it's, my, my phone is, is perfect to test it. So you don't need a, a good internet connection. That's, you need a good internet connection to, to send out the files and to, to bring them down. But not for this remote grading. I think Zoom uh, consumes on this moment more of my internet connection than that the grading does. Uh, yeah. one, other, one other item here for you gentlemen. Uh, I actually have two other questions here. Uh, so who has the raw files? Obviously the colorist has the raw files. What about the client? In this well, case, I, I have a ProRes files. So the client has the best quality you can get to them, but could conceivably work with proxy fairly low resolution. Would that be correct? Yes, that's absolutely correct. But in most cases, the client has the material. He is the owner of the material. So if the client has the raw files, then of course you can both work in raw and then there is no problem. But if the client is sitting at home due to Corona, then you send him out proxies. So uh, I'm gonna throw this one at you, Guy. Uh, if you were using a particular power grade or let the client doesn't have, is that gonna be a problem? Yes, that will be a problem. Um, the client needs to have the same project um, and you have to make sure that everything is in there. And if you use power grades, you have to integrate them before you send it out uh, because he needs them because otherwise it won't work. Because as we said, it's the commands, it's not the footage. And if the command clicks to something what isn't on the other side, then it won't work. Um, so you have to think about it before you send it out. And actually the very best way, what I did the last time I did it in, in Holland, I sent out just on a hard disk, a copy of my hard disk. And I gave it even the same name. So at the client, it reconnected immediately without any problem. And I was very sure that everything was there. But you have to make sure, you, you can't use anything what's not at the client. And I'm going to go ahead here. I'm going to make sure. There we go. I'm going to go ahead here and just, you know, there's, there's the obvious statement. And maybe both of you can throw a sentence or two in, but I don't want to get us too bogged down on this. Obviously, if the client's not looking at raw files, obviously, if they're looking at ProRes versions, whether it's uh, HQ, whether it's proxy, they're looking at something slightly different than what you might be looking at in raw. It's gonna do its best to try and represent it, but it's not going to be the same. Um, my raw data has better flow through Resolve's nodal structure than say um, uh, ProRes proxy files might. Again, in 90% of, of the cases, the client owns the material and the client is looking at the raw too. And then there is no problem at all. Um, and indeed, you're, you're absolutely right. When you send out proxies, he's looking at a little bit different, uh, but come on, it works. And that's the most important thing now. Uh, but most cases, the, the DOP or the director is looking at the same files, the same raw files as what the grader is working in. And I, I have, for example, another question, Guy. What about the raw data? What happened when, the, when you move the raw data in the raw panel in Resolve? What, what is happening in, here in my client computer? And the moment you have also the raw material, then you, everything will work. And I can work in raw and you can see that I'm working in raw. Then everything works. But in the case that you are, are looking at proxies, then of course it won't work. But 
the best thing and the most optimized world is that you have to make sure that the client has the same, exactly the same material as what you're looking at, because then you're sure that if you tweak the rat, that the client will see exactly the same tweak. I'm going to uh, just wrap up one, two more questions. Then I want to make sure, you know, the rest of us get a chance. Uh, uh, we hear from everybody because this has been super crazy. Again, gentlemen, I was blown away by this, uh, just this whole workflow. And I, you know, it's one of those things you can't know it all. How do you feel about the limitations of a shared screen virtually across the internet? Say maybe I were to try and share my resolve screen with, with you, Guy, or with you, Diego. What would you say about that? Well, that has a big disadvantage because then you are sharing footage. Uh, the moment my screen goes over, um, if you look at that to the, to the footage on a computer, well, then we are absolutely not looking at the same because in my monitor, it's Rec 709 and then you're watching it on a computer monitor. So I don't think that's a good idea if you talk about color accuracy. Um, on the other hand, uh, sending over the complete uh, image, the complete file, especially if it's 4K uh, raw and, and running, then you need a real fast internet connection that maybe will work in Amsterdam, but not in Bogota. All right, I'm going to do one last question here. And I think I know the answer, but uh, Diego, why don't you throw in on this one? Uh, is there any, and, and if you don't know, go ahead and feel free to bat it to anybody else. Uh, yeah. do you, is there any real file path difference between Windows, Mac, and let's even go with Linux as far as the grading of these images go? What, what do you mean that if, if there is an advantage or what is? If uh, I'm on a Mac system, you're on a PC system, we've plugged in drives on both. We've gone ahead, added the media to the media pool on both systems. Is there going to be any real practical da difference between platforms? I mean, in, in so I, I, I tried it in, in, the, in Mac and in PC and, and in PC and it, it was good. It was really good. I mean, I don't have like any preferences. In my office, I have a PC because you know for the price and, and, and sure. here in South America, the dollar is expensive. It's really, really, really expensive. But here in my house, as, as you notice, um, I, will, I will put here, as you notice here, I'm, I'm, with my, I'm with a Mac. And it's not a big Mac. That's, that's really a good thing. The client doesn't need to have a big, big computer to make this session. This is a normal laptop. Um, and if you're asking me about the preferences, I will say it does. I mean, I don't have any preferences. Here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap this. Since the media is in both spots, at the correct spot on each local media pool, uh, it's going to work without a problem. Yeah. Uh, gentlemen, any last thoughts before we go and move on? Yes, we want to make a last summary for you guys, just for you to check what do we think about these three medals. Um, for example, in the streaming, expensive. The quality video is really good. It's real time. Sometimes it's laggy. But one of the main problems is that the client is, I mean, we are reviewing in the client's monitor. All right. The DRP, the DRP is the cheapest way. It's really easy to make comments. The, one of the problems is that it's not in real time. The client needs resolve and the client is reviewing the material in the client monitor. And Guy, can you share us about remote grading summary? Well, what you saw is it, it's absolutely in real time. Um, and if you both have a reference monitor, then you really can talk about the, the smallest nuances in color. Uh, what I see in, in Amsterdam is exactly the same uh, rat you can see uh, in Bogota. So if I have to choose between the three methods, then there is only one. Re remote grading is, is really perfect. And something extra, what we tested this afternoon, uh, and, and it's not yet there completely, but it's, it's working. Uh, you also can do this with editing. Uh, in Resolve, uh, we made up the same connection on the edit page 
and actually I could edit in Amsterdam and Diego could comment in Bogota. Uh, so that's for the future. It's not yet there, but it's coming. You're in Singapore, a beautiful country. And we just kind of want to hear from you a little bit, and then we'll bring it back to everybody, just how some of the professional areas have been uh, affected by COVID. Okay, thanks, Jeff. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm originally from Indonesia, uh, but I'm based in Singapore. Uh, the effect of COVID actually has been quite a huge impact because uh, location shoot has been uh, stop has been forbidden since March 27. So I was supposed to start a 13 part series in sometimes in end of April, but it got postponed because, because they only finished one episode. So everything has been pushed back. Uh, but I'm, we're starting, I'm starting to get small, small project here and there, fortunately. Uh, but yeah, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the situation here has been, has gotten better because they ease up the restriction. Some shop is going to be open, but yeah, it's getting better. Good to hear. Let's bring this out to uh, our whole group here. Um, there we go. That's better. I got to make that. One more. There we go. Got to make that microphone on. Uh, you know, I have some family who were in medicine, some family who were, who are uh, in uh, some of the various hospitals. I mean, it's stressful. It's stressful uh, as a family. We, we have two working adults, myself, my wife. We have three little kids. Uh, Kevin, I know you've got uh, some kids at home. I mean, it is definitely one of the more difficult spots professionally, personally in my life. Uh, we try to make it a point to slow down and appreciate each other because of it, uh, but I'd like to hear from, you know, just a little bit of the effect on how the rest of you guys are doing. Yeah, like if, yeah, say, yeah, audio, yeah. there you go. <laughs> Turn it on. Yeah, like you say, I have a three-year-old at home and um, he thinks it's great to have daddy at home. Doesn't understand why I squirrel away into the office and uh, try and keep him outside from time to time. You know, when I'm on my own, he, he comes in and sits with me. He loves the panels. He loves to do color grading. He has They're no gorgeous. idea. I got I, I to gotta tell you, my four-year-old, she came in while they were doing their presentation and told me, lunch is ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's a mixed blessing, isn't it? On the one hand, you know, you do get more time with the family, and it's nice to be home. I mean, this house has never been in such good repair since I bought it. But on the other hand, uh, we have to be disciplined and uh, yeah, I'm embracing it now, but there was a tough period where I was kind of not getting work done. And then it was like a big holiday because as you know, Jeff, I travel a lot. The last 25 years, most weeks I'd be traveling three weeks a month. And uh, so getting used to being in one place drove me a little crazy for a while. Um, and uh, I'll talk a little bit later about some of the things that I went through, some of the things that I did. But uh, what a great opportunity. I mean, it's forced me to reevaluate my career, my business, and uh, I'm loving it, actually. This is a great opportunity. I, I think that's, you know, a lot of what we're all doing as an approach is trying to say it doesn't make a difference. We can't bargain with what's going on. We can't argue against it. If we're going to do this in the long-term future, the smartest thing we can do is figure out how to survive or we won't survive at it, yeah. uh, regardless of how pretty or ugly that is as a statement. Yeah, um, I think one thing, Jeff, I can add is the fact that you guys are tuning into this means you're keen about learning and it is a good time to probably upskill a little bit and you know just sit down and go, crikey, I want to know a little bit more about this want to know more about shooting or how this camera works so it's a good time to do that so that's a slight plus i suppose for all of us all of the same you know people. you know it's more than that warren because you know we're not just one or two people because we're such a collective we can actually draw upon you know people in other arts who are very very talented uh, later later this month in about a a less than a week from now, I'm actually interviewing the two gentlemen who was the uh, cinematographer and camera ops on The Joker. 
and you know, it might not be the silliest thing to invite them to come to one of these sort of things. And while you're talking about that, Jeff, do you want to plug that? I might like, as well I know plug someone it. someone else who's working on that. Uh, yeah, uh, coming up uh, this Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday is Post Production World Online. It's sort of the replacement for NAB. Warren and I, we had Kevin there last year. Warren and I both are teaching at the event. Uh, it's fairly inexpensive. It's three hundred dollars, and it covers the really a wide gamut. You know, anytime we can get in the word gamut, it's always a big, big bonus. <laughs> a wide gamut of production and post production. Of course, you know, that higher end color sort of feeling is going to be the sort of stuff that the ICA's heart and blood is. But if you wanted to be smarter about Premiere, After Effects, Avid, if you wanted to, you know, see a wider smattering. In fact, uh, Warren, what, what are the two classes? Are you doing just two classes? And what classes yeah, are they? Two classes, uh, Skin Tones and Matching. Uh, it's something lots of people always ask about. And Resolve FX which is something I've been doing a little bit more of as a colorist, just looking where I can add more value to my sessions by saying, well, I can do that or I can do that. So that's the two sessions I'm doing. And the other good thing is if you sign up, you don't have to watch them all live. You can get access to them all afterwards. So that's the good value. So of, uh, 120 days, I believe. So roughly speaking from a per class basis, I think there are 150 classes. It comes out to being about, uh, you know, two bucks a class because it's 300 uh, some sessions. And I'm aside from interviewing the both the gentlemen from the Joker, I'm also interviewing Marianne Brandon, who was the editor of Star Wars and Star Trek or two of the Star Wars films. And I'm also interviewing uh, Vashi Naransky. Vashi is uh, a pretty big premiere guy. And some days I uh, wear that hat as well. Uh, I'm going to switch this over to Blake just to hear a little bit. And then, Blake, you're going to be showing us uh, some, a little bit about Resolve from, from your training base in Munich. I'm not actually going to so show the slide. Uh, I'm just okay. going to turn it over to you, Blake. Okay, so just to give you an idea about my background, I've been a colorist for over 30 years. And when we started doing color correction, uh, we didn't have the, um, shall we say, the luxury of being able to do qualifiers and being able to do selective qualification for colors. But even in that way of doing fixed vectored secondary color correction, it makes things run very fast because if you don't want to spend that time to be able to focus in on one particular color, you can just focus on everything that's red, everything that's green, everything that's blue or things like that. And so there is that function that still exists inside of Resolve. And it's actually a little hidden feature in here. And you can actually make this into a power grade and you can actually plug it into any project that you're using. And so let's uh, get onto that and have a look. Hi everyone, so for today's tip we're going to go over the process of making a fast secondary or qualifier using Resolve 16. So for example, this is a great way to work when you're working on long format material and you don't want to be bogged down by adjusting the hue, saturation, and luminance qualifiers inside Resolve. So this way all you have to do is throw up a node add this in and now it's qualified for you automatically. So for example, let's have a look at this shot that we have here. We've got the guys on horseback and I wanna do a separation for the field and also for the sky. So what happens here is you can see in this area, I just wanna pick this up here and pick this up here. So the first thing I wanna do here is add a node. So if you're using a panel other than the advanced panel, which has dedicated keys for this, um, you have to then come up to the color pull down menu, select presets, and now let's select the blue for the sky. And now what we do here is then we make another node, come to the same area, and then we come down to presets, and then we'll select yellow. So now if I come over here to my highlight area, you can see there's the 
yellow for the field that has been isolated. Then if I come back to the previous node and then go into highlight, I can see the blue for the sky is highlighted there. So now with this in mind, all I have to do is now adjust my controls and now I can change the blue in this area. And then I can come down to this node and just change the hue for the yellow. And there we have it. And then, for example, if I want to change everything afterwards, I can just add another serial node on the end and then make my change, or I could add parallel nodes or anything like that on top of it. I'd like to talk about number three, because for this, I really want Kevin and Warren to talk and show a little bit about what we're doing, what we're planning, what's starting to happen. Would you be interested in attending an ICA virtual class? And some, uh, uh, nearly 80% of you said, yeah, with other students. So I think this is just a really natural break right here for the two of you guys to talk a little bit about what we're doing with ICA over the next year or so. Gentlemen, I'm going to turn it over to you. Um, I'll go first. Yeah, we, we are excited to launch this new uh, division, I suppose, of the ICA. Basically, all the classes that we've run over the years are now going to be rolled out as virtual classes, a maximum of six people. It's basically going to be like the bring your own laptop class that we were running the last couple of years and what we did at the summit. And so you obviously need a good internet connection, headphones, a, a machine we say powerful enough to run Resolve, but it doesn't have to be a Resolve class, obviously. That's a good benchmark. You can download the media from us. We can then upload and review through Frame.io. You can chat like we do here with your fellow students. So we're excited about it. It's going to be fun and going to be in your own time zone as well, which is great for you. Probably not so good for me, but it will be like this. Uh, I'll let Kevin discuss some of the other aspects like the one-on-one -on -one and things like that. Because I think what you're about to talk about is one of the cooler things I've come across in the last uh, three to five years, especially uh, if we all had to run out of our, our our great grading suites and might not have great access to hardware. Okay, so I'm gonna come down here to Eclipse Tech. This is a company that we've partnered with. Um, and what they basically do is they take the grunt out of using virtual machines. So I'm running uh, virtual classes starting from next week. I'm doing HDR next, starting next Wednesday, color strategies the week after. And I'm gonna roll out two a month, go through the entire syllabus i have about um, 20 classes that i teach and i had an interesting question from one of the students next week who said i'm self quarantined at home and i only have a works laptop and it's not very powerful uh, will i be able to follow along the class and this is our solution uh, what you can do is you can use that laptop with a web browser and come up to Eclipse here. And you can see that um, I have one instance, but I can create um, as many virtual machines as I wish. Um, so if I go to workstation templates, um, I can choose my region. And let's say I want to work in London, for example. Uh, let's make it. Let's go through the motions of creating a new template. So yeah, I'm looking in. As yeah, you're go going ahead. through the template, I mean, the, I think the really the most important part here is that we can take somebody who does not have adequate hardware at home, and for a fairly inexpensive price, give them access and access to media, so you're able to provide a virtual machine. Yeah. So these machines are basically going to be. Um, eight core i think they have about 32 gig of ram and every single one of them has a tesla gpu so we're talking about pretty decent um power enough to run let's say raw files in aces no problem and you can do that on the virtual machine and yeah the cost it's going to be somewhere for a three-day class it's going to be about a hundred bucks so Something it's just like going to add a little bit more to the class price if you don't have access to it. And it's not 
just the class. We're going to make it possible for you to extend that further and have a relationship with this group if you want. Exactly. So you, you have an account with them. You take it for the class. If you then decide that you actually want to run jobs on it, then you, uh, you're free to pay for it by the hour. So this is the nice thing. It's just not an expensive monthly cost. Um, you pay, basically pay for it by the hour. And yep. then if you do want to work 8K, uh, you can do all your grading in HD. I normally work that way. And then when you want to render, you can just switch the machine for a more powerful machine. Those were the two really uh, most powerful things that I heard from you when you threw this out as an idea, because I'm familiar with some of the other technologies out there. Um, Eclipse, I'm very, very impressed with. But the real thing that I thought was a crazy idea is that you could work on a fairly low powered machine, you know, keeping it really inexpensive until the very last step and just say, hey, one day, let's go ahead and switch it for all the horsepower in the world for the actual final render. It's very exciting. And uh, talking about the media, that's another advantage because, you know, we, we have files that we use during the classes. Um, and if your computer is in the internet and your media is already on the internet, we can FTP from one site to another and it bypasses your home bandwidth. So it's going at super fast speeds from your storage, from your cloud storage to your cloud computer. That's all happening in the cloud and it happens really, really quick. The one biggest tip, whether you, you uh, use this for yourself or you do this as an ICA class, the big thing that Kevin and I uh, spoke about and laughed was remember to turn off your virtual machine because you get billed 24 seven otherwise. Yeah, that, that is the gotcha. It's not how long you're using it, it's how long you leave it running. So yeah, that's something to watch out for. Yeah, that it strikes, you know, cause you, you might accidentally, you might intentionally have it running for a period of time while it's rendering with no UI interaction from on your part, and you don't want it to shut itself off. You know, that would, that would be kind of catastrophic. No, I mean, it, it does bill in one hour cycles. So you don't want to be turning it off every time you go for a cup of chow or coffee or something like that. <clears throat> um, but yeah, you have to be mindful that uh, if it's running, you're paying for it. I'm, I'm uh, really excited about that. I want to, um, have you or and Warren to answer a couple of these questions. Why don't you, uh, you want to end the screen share for this just so we can yeah, sure. answer these? Um, let's see. Uh, Joey asks here, uh, how does it work for NDA materials? What's the FTP security? Um, it's, it's really good. So Eclipse, again, one of the things about Eclipse is that they are a company designed for the film industry. So they've been working with the studios to get uh, proper MPAA security clearance um, so they can work with the big studios. And Ben asks, how does it work with your reference monitor? Yeah, that is a little bit of an issue. What we're working with them at the moment is to see if we can connect to a, an ultra studio or something like that, but that's not currently possible. So um, it's, it's a straight display port uh, so that does mean that you bypass the video output project settings um, in Resolve. Um, it's a display port from your host computer. And the, the last question here, and I already know the answer, but I'm gonna, I, I think it comes best from you. Does hmm. one lose the project one is working on when the machines are turned off? No, this is the great thing. Everything, the software that, so you own the machine. So if you put your own software on there, that stays on there. If you have a project that stays on there. Uh, and the way that works is there's a small fee for um, what, you, what you might think of as your local storage. And so all your projects and uh, media, everything stays on that machine. And you decide whether to leave it there or whether to um, download it or export it. Yeah, it's just absolutely outstanding. Uh, I think it's part of that world of the future that we're all moving into. This idea that sometimes not somebody, somebody's not gonna have that piece of hardware they need to take the class. And all we gotta do is spin one of these up and they're able to attend class, regardless almost of where they are in the world. And there's a nice absolutely. little test for it. Uh, if you have questions, of course, you're going to reach out to the ICA. We're happy to answer that. 
Uh, I'm going to just go back to sharing the results. We'll give away our monitor, and then we'll wrap, gentlemen. Oh, sounds good. Can I win it, Jeff? Can I win that that voucher? Absolutely, absolutely, you can win. You said uh, that. You said it. I did. I did, Warren. Um, you know, uh, similar to us having virtual classes, some. 92% of you would love to do a virtual colorist mixer twice a year between maybe NAB and IBC. Uh, we, we are absolutely as a group working on it. We're trying to figure out how to make it an enjoyable, as close as we can get to a real world interpersonal experience. Breakout rooms, uh, back and forth, a lot more alcohol, a lot less education, but a lot more alcohol and giveaways. Uh, anything anybody wants to add in about what, what we're thinking on ideas about well, a virtual yeah, mixer? Yeah, we were thinking the same. I think uh, a, a lot, lot of people alcohol. obviously cannot get to Las Vegas or Amsterdam. And we've run some smaller mixers and they've been really well received. So it's really something I think we should look at doing. And these, these poll results are very encouraging. It could be Joey really asked, loud, Larry shirts, cocktails, hats. Jo Joey asked this question that I think is really important. Um, whether it's been at NAB, IBC, or a virtual mixer, we're an inclusive group. Uh, you don't have to be a colorist. You could be an editor. You could be somebody in sound. You could be a novice in this field. And I'd like to think that everybody here, just because of the nature of the way they teach, is a compassionate human being and is willing to hear a little bit about you, even if this isn't your expertise. The thing I like about a virtual mixer to cover the time zones, we can have a 24 hour party. That would be pretty cool. Uh, that, you know, <laughs> something uh, I would, I'd have to break out my, uh, I'd have to take, take, put my professional drinking pants back on for that. Uh, it's been a while since I've worn them. I think people uh, would come and go. I think that would be the whole fun of it is to like have it slowly go through time zones, maybe to have a designated host in each time zone as, as each time zone hits happy hour. We might, we might have to find somebody for like Hawaii and there's a, a wonderful spot, St. John's, Newfoundland, uh, which is on a half hour time zone. That would be another real fun little group. But uh, I like that idea. But you know what we can do? We can get one of those webcams as a virtual background and uh, we can be anywhere we want, right? All we need is a uh, webcam stuck somewhere. See, favorite TV show? I think Tiger King. I, I think wow. this is wrong, of course. I think Mandalorian was, was significantly better. And, and I, I, just so everybody has a laugh, I have actually been to at least uh, one of the big cat places in Florida. I've been to, I think it's Carol's thing, uh, which was not painted out anywhere near as bad as they, they make all that look. But I've, I've been to the big cat place in Florida. I refuse to watch it. I've not watched it. I haven't, I haven't watched it either, Warren. Is watching a webinar live, thankfully, yeah, 80% of us, 85% of us think, yeah, a live webinar. I think that's kind of the neatest part about uh, webinars is, and you know, I hate to use the word webinar. We, I think we as a group have all decided that we're trying to treat it much more like in-person conferencing, except for when we have like 100 plus people in the room. Uh, are we positive about the role of the colorist going forward? I think it'll be super competitive. And so rates will drop and standards will drop. Uh, I think that's all of our fear. And one of the things I think that makes the ICA so important, so valuable is you never wanna shoot for the bottom rung, the lowest common denominator. You can't make a living at the bottom of the pyramid. And the, probably the only way to get higher up in that regard is to up your skills, up your skill set, and be shooting towards the top, whether it's HDR, whether it's ACES, whether it's RAW, along those lines. And I think that's probably the end long-term value of both these webinars, the colorist mixer and the ICA, is that's what our aim is, is to kind of improve everybody by using our, our group skill set. Each of us are yeah. strong in different I, areas. I, Jeff, I thought you were gonna say by using a Flanders monitor. You know, I absolutely uh, believe that the DM2240 I have here is just the way to grade stuff. And uh, by the way, uh, our, our friend at Flanders, Bram Desmond, says hello uh, to everybody. We will all wish him well back. I'm going to stop the sharing here. Speaking of which, uh, I'm going to let one of you smarter gentlemen 
uh, give us an idea of how we're going to give away this Flanders screen, uh, three, not screen, this $500 discount. The big thing I want to make sure we're very, very clear about uh, is that we only want somebody to win who can actually use it. It would really hurt uh, our, it would make us sad for somebody who's not going to use it for grading, not doesn't need it to win. So with that being said, gentlemen, I'm going to turn it over to you. Do you want to come up with uh, uh, what sort of clever way should we do to give this away? I, I think it's gay. I think it's over to gay. It has the uh, local knowledge. It could be a clue, gay. Okay, so... You you need What's to your... write it in the chat. Yeah, sorry, just write it in the chat, the answer. Yes, you have to, uh, to put the answer in the chat. And the question is, uh, why is Flanders called Flanders? And actually, the funniest one can also win. So you don't um, have to... Don't have to be right. You don't have to be right. So you can all go, all have a turn. We will evaluate these answers when it's not 3.30 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> How's your breakfast? Hey, guys, I want to say thank you for joining. It's been really great to run our first webinar. We are planning more. Thanks for your support. Thanks for being on the first one. Uh, there will be a recording of it somewhere. Uh, we're not quite sure where that will be, but check us out on social media and all the usual places. We've got now a virtual tab on the site. I want to thank all my buddies, all my ICA buddies, especially Jeff for hosting. And uh, great for joining. See you guys. Anyone else want to say goodbye? Bon yeah, it's, uh, it's been really great. We did have a great attendance. Um, we hit our maximum of 100 at one point. Um, so thanks everybody from all over the world for joining us and we look forward to seeing you again on the next one So uh, who's gonna who's gonna pick that winner? You should do it. Well, okay, Guy, it's all you buddy. Mm -hmm. But by, by the way, I uh, the right answer is of course uh, uh, It's a an area in, in Belgium as Guy told us. Well, it's a little bit more complex than that but uh, it's your home base, buddy. You you pick a winner. Be capricious. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to read them all. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure, none whatsoever. <laughs> Not being put on the spot. We didn't plan this. This is good. He's getting a little red in the face, which is my whole intention here. Oh, that's good. That's good. Let's pass it. I, I'd say Actually, my favorite is. Uh, Okay, go ahead. Have you, have you made a choice? Let it be Guy. Yeah. Okay. I've got, I think the best one, it's a dog's name. It's a dog's <laughs> name, which I believe is uh, Henning Wick. W-E-I-C. Yes. yes. I'm just going to put into the chat here. Uh, in fact, Warren, you probably ought to do it. But I believe it's warren.eagles at icolorist.com. Yeah. yeah Icolorist. Dot com. Uh, if you would uh, email Warren and he will send you that certificate. Otherwise, gentlemen, uh, it has been an honor. It's been a pleasure. I've had a joy hosting this. Uh, just so you have the laugh, all of you, because you don't know this, I'm actually a panelist on a different webinar. And I told them I would be late sooner than give up this hosting duty because it's <laughs> such a blast to be around you guys. So yeah. thank you. It was yes, wonderful. It was great. See you, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> great. Thanks, thanks a lot. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for attending, everybody. Cheers. Thanks.